So let me show you the smarter way to build an online health coaching business without wasting your time. Cool? Watch this. Hey guys, what's up? You're Del King, you're our CEO and founder of Healthpreneur. We help health professionals and coaches scale their coaching businesses faster and without the grind. And let me be honest, there's a lot of health coaches and gurus out there teaching you how to build your business. Some of them are fine. Some of them I've coached. Many of them I know they're, I understand their businesses. What I'm going to share with you comes from experience that very few people have. And I'm not here to blow my own horn, but I want to give you context here because what I'm about to share with you is not just about the message, it's about the messenger. And very few people have been in this this game as long as I have. I've been online since 2005 in the health, fitness, and wellness space. I built a previous seven-figure company that I sold. Health Furner does over eight figures, and we've helped thousands of health professionals, specifically over 1,300 health professionals and coaches. No one in the coaching space holds a candle to our experience, our level of wisdom, and our results. Now, I know that sounds like a very conceited statement, but if you've been watching my stuff for any amount of time, you know that I have a lot of confidence. And that confidence comes from experience. It's not from like narcissism or whatever. But I share this because there's so many, I, so much bullshit out there. There's so much like bad advice. And I wanna just kinda like get rid of the garbage and give you three things in this video that I think are gonna make a huge difference, okay? So let me dive right into this real quick and let's just get to it. So let's talk about the three big mistakes and then I'll show you how to fix them, okay? So mistake number one that I see a lot of health professionals, health coaches try to make is to try to help everyone. I say most health professionals succeed in spite of themselves. And that's specifically with a brick and mortar, right? You have a clinic, people walk down the sidewalk, they see her, oh, cool, I'm gonna walk in, there I go, I've got this issue, I've got some, you know, IBS stuff, I've got some bowel issues, skin issues, hair loss, weight loss, low energy. Anyone can walk in off the street, anyone, right? Very few practitioners will say, you know what, sorry, hold on, hold on, hold on. We only work with this specific type of problem. I've never met a practitioner who runs a clinic who does that. And the challenge is that because with geography you're limited, you naturally are gonna filter out almost everyone in your area because you only deal with one condition. However, when you go online, the world is your oyster. And the biggest mistake you can make coming online is trying to be a generalist. Number one, I call it the death zone. If you watch any of my other videos, you've probably seen generalist, specialist, authority, celebrity. You have to climb that ladder. And if you're staying in the generalist zone, you're finished. Don't even start the business. Shut it down right now, put a closed sign on the window and just go work for someone else. I promise you, okay? You have to specialize. It is the first most important step you have to take in your business. And here's two reasons why. Number one, if you do not specialize, your marketing is gonna suck. And your marketing is gonna suck because it's gonna be too diluted because you're trying to help everyone. How are you supposed to put any messaging together that at the same time is supposed to help people lose weight, have energy, overcome cancer, regain their hair, fix rosacea? It's impossible. And the problem is that your marketing becomes so diluted that it becomes so ineffective. And if it's ineffective, you're not making money and you're not serving people. So that's the big, that's the number one mistake or the number one issue with that. Second issue, is that you can't scale delivery. And this is the biggest pandemic, the biggest problem in the health profession is that everything is time dependent one-on-one -on -one because every client is a special snowflake. And there's no one putting a gun to your head saying you have to work with everyone. You don't have to do that. That's a choice that you have made. You, you, you said, I'm gonna work with everyone. That's it, right? And because of that, you have one person that comes in with IBS, another person comes in with rosacea, another person comes in and they have joint pain, another person comes in and they have whatever the issue is. And every single person has different issues, different protocols, and therefore it's impossible to scale delivery because everyone needs your undivided attention for their specific problem. So, What's the solution to this? Well, naturally the solution to being generalist is to specialize. And the most important consideration anyone starting a health coaching business has to understand is the most important question you have to answer. There's two very important decisions you have to make. Number one is your business model. I've got other videos to talk about that. But in this video, the one thing that's gonna change everything for your future, good or bad, is your single target market or your inability to determine one. If you say, I am a wellness coach, you're finished. I'm sorry to say this, but the average health coach makes less than $37,000 a year. That's not a lot. That's what, $3,000 a month? I mean, if you live in the desert in a tent, fine. But if you live in the real world, that's not a lot of money and that's business income. That's not even personal take home. If you do not want to struggle, you must specialize. You must select a single, not two, a single target market and obsess and focus on that until you reach at least a million dollars in revenue before you consider doing anything else. It's the single most important piece of advice I can give you. It's what I tell my clients all the time. You have another idea for another product? I don't care. I don't give a shit. Are you in a million dollars yet? Nope, cool, don't even do it. 
Okay. But I want to help everyone. You're not going to help everyone. Not in this lifetime and not in 10 more reincarnations. There are too many people on this planet to help. Even in a single target market, you will not help everyone over the next 10 lifetimes. Let's say you wanted to help hypothyroidism, right? Menopausal women with hypothyroidism. It's in the millions. It's in the millions in the States alone. So like, are you really, really going to help all of them? No. So you're going to help everyone outside of that? No. Just get over it. You weren't going to help them in the first place. So when you narrow your market, you have to focus on a single target market. There's two things you have to consider, okay? So I'm going to separate this out for a sec. You have a profitable problem, as we call it, and your perfect client. So the profitable problem is the problem that you are solving. It's not the person, it's the problem. You have a person, which is the perfect client, which we'll get to in a second. But what's the problem that they want solved? Your profitable problem needs to really check off two boxes. It needs to be severe and it needs to be persistent. If it's not either of those or both of those, you're gonna deal with a lot of wanting to think about it. I'll maybe do this later because it's not that big of a deal. So let me give you an example. A headache, the occasional tension headache is not severe and it's not persistent and it's a terrible profitable problem to build a coaching business around. If you wanna sell Tylenol, that's fine. Migraines, by contrast, is a phenomenal market and some of our most successful clients have been in the migraine space. Why? Because migraines are very severe to the point where the person doesn't even want to get out of bed and their livelihood is impacted by their inability to show up at work. That is a very big problem. Persistence means it happens a lot. It's not once a month. It's like every couple days. And because of that, the level of pain these people are experiencing emotionally, psychologically, physically has to be solved yesterday. And they will do whatever they can to solve the problem. And that's why they're willing to spend premium prices to fix that once and for all because they recognize the alternatives, Advil, Tylenol, whatever other medications, don't do shit, right? So that's an example of a profitable problem that is very effective. Now, the perfect client is the person who has that. Now, a couple different layers here, but I'll give you one question to think about. Who do you have the most confidence in being able to help? Now, you could have two different types of people with migraines. One is 700 pounds, diabetes, feet about to be amputated. And another person is a busy corporate executive. Which one do you think is gonna get better results? Obviously, right? So I'm not saying you have to work with busy corporate executives, but you have to be very clear about who this person is with this problem. You have to look for a very specific problem that a lot of people have or a bigger problem with a very small group of people. So what I mean by that is if you have a big problem like weight loss, it helps to have a little bit of a tighter perfect client as opposed to just women, right? Like women's a big audience, weight loss is a big problem. So if you have a big problem like weight loss, it might make sense to narrow that down a little bit to like new moms, right? But I wouldn't go super deep to like new moms who are teachers on vacation. Like that's just ridiculous. So anyways, the moral of the story here is you have to select the single target market because when you do, you can get inside their heads and you can speak to them and they feel understood. Okay, so that's numero uno. That's the big problem or one of the big mistakes and how to fix it. Second issue is underpricing. Listen, I was the guy who felt really bad charging anything. I mean, I was making 20 bucks an hour as a trainer. I, had, I was very, it was very awkward for me to ask for money. Like even though I knew I was transforming people, people's lives and I had a really hard journey to get through that. And so if you're dealing with that, I totally get it, okay? But you have to understand that if you do not charge appropriately, you have to work so much harder to make the same amount of money that you would if you charged more. You have to work so much harder in terms of your time to make ends meet. And this is how burnout happens, right? Is, you know, if you wanna make $10,000 a month, for instance, if you charge $100 a session versus $5,000 for a coaching program, that's a very different business, right? That's a fundamentally different business. And I'm not here to say that you can't work one-on-one -on -one with people, right? But you have to charge more. Because if you think about it, the, what, what you're doing, I don't even know what you're doing, but I know that you're transforming people's lives. And the transformation that you're creating for someone, assuming it's a profitable problem that they want solved, is immeasurable in terms of its ROI for the client. If, if someone's been dealing with weight issues and hormone issues and low energy for 20 years, you think $5,000 is too much to ask? It's not. Don't buy the bullshit of, oh, people don't have money to spend on their health. That's a great limiting belief to have. That's never going to serve you. And it's also going to come up as an objection over and over again. Someone says 5K is a lot of money for a health issue. Compared to what? Compared to what? Oh, well, compared to like P90X, like great, awesome. Go to P90X and let me know next week when you fall off the bandwagon, right? 
Listen, if you've not watched any other videos on, on sales conversations, please watch those because those will make a lot of sense. But you have to understand that to help someone lose weight or physically transform, emotionally transform, they become a fundamentally different person and their life changes forever for the better. Do you think that's more valuable than going on an all-inclusive trip for the same amount of money getting wasted for a week? Do you think that might be more valuable than buying the latest 60-inch TV that has a cool curvature so it's got better viewing? Do you think it's more valuable than the latest iPhone because the last iPhone's pixels were just a little bit less than this one's? It's all f***ing bullshit. Don't buy the excuse that your thing is too expensive, okay? And it's not your job to help everyone on the planet. If they want help, they can go to the hospital, they can go to the healthcare system. If they live in Canada or the UK, that's already paid for, and they can recognize what free healthcare does. Absolutely nothing. For acute stuff, yeah. Yeah, sure. But it's not your job to serve everyone in the world. And if you choose to, that's your choice. But if you want to actually transform people's lives, you have to charge more. The less people pay, the less they pay attention. I just said someone asked me, uh, well, you're like, how do like, how does working with, like, I've watched a lot of your stuff on, on online, on whatever. Uh, how does working with you help me get results that much faster? I'm like, if you're asking me this, you don't even understand how to communicate this to your clients. So when someone invests money with you, just the very fact that they've invested money with you means they're gonna do the work. Like most people watching this video are gonna do a grand total of nothing with this information, except for like the 1%, right? But very, very few, and maybe this is you, and I'm gonna call you out on this. If you watch this video and do nothing, shame on you. But it's not shame on you, it's because you haven't paid for this, and I, I get that. You come work with me, I can, I can tell you the same thing. I can literally give you the same video to watch, and because you pay me money, you'll actually do it. And it's the same thing with your clients. When they pay to work with you, and the more they pay, the more invested they'll be. Someone who pays 50 bucks for one-off sessions, do you think they're gonna be committed to the process? No way. They're gonna pay $5,000 for a 12-week program to transform their body? Uh, okay, yeah, I think I'll be a little more committed because they don't wanna let that money go to waste. There's that pain of loss of like, shit, I've invested 5K, I don't want to let that go to waste. And that's great. You should get to the point where you should feel okay telling people, go get another credit card. Go get another credit card and put this on the credit card. Because nothing else you're ever going to buy is going to transform your life as much as working with me. You have to have that conviction and you have to be sold on your pricing and understand that no matter what it is you charge, 2K, 5K, 10K, it is still massively underpriced for the value and the transformation your client's getting. And it's not that they're getting 10 videos and 50 pages of eBooks and it's none of that, it's the outcome. And if you're speaking to someone who doesn't get that, here's what you tell them, goodbye. Next, you don't play, you don't bend the rules, you don't give discounts, you don't beg and plea. You say, thanks for your time, later. Next person, let's go. That's it, okay? Because you have an invisible pipeline or a visible pipeline of perfect prospects that are just flooding into your business. And if you don't have that, obviously you wanna create that. Anyway, so underpricing, a big issue. Obviously you want to price yourself. I would recommend pricing yourself out of the market. You wanna price yourself to such a level where they can't even compare you to anyone else. They're like, oh man, like this sounds exactly like that other person and it's about the same price. You don't even wanna have that conversation. You wanna be like, oh shit. That's like 10 times more than anything else I've seen. Two things are gonna happen. One is they're like, I'm gonna go for the cheaper option and they'll get cheaper results. Or they're gonna invest with you because they're like, you know, this must be really good. And then it's on you to deliver. So don't fuck around with that, right? So that's the second thing is around pricing. The third thing tied in with this is working one-on-one. -on -one. Let me draw this on the iPad. What's gonna happen when you are working in a one-on-one -on -one capacity, whether it's in-person or online coaching, it doesn't matter. Okay, you are gonna have revenue and you've got clients, number of clients. And what's gonna happen is this, is the more clients you work with, the more money you make. But that's gonna come to a point that I call, right, where, I mean, wherever this is, it's arbitrary, obviously. This is called the capacity ceiling. And this is your glass ceiling. If you are working one-on-one, -on -one, this is the most amount of money you can make and the most uh, number of clients you can serve. All of this is called lost revenue. And all of this is clients you could have helped and clients who are gonna go elsewhere. So that's great, right? You can help a couple people, you make a couple grand, no big deal. When you work one-on-one, -on -one, that's what happens. And I would strongly recommend that you don't live in that world because number one, it's not scalable as you just saw. Um, it leads to more burnout. And here's the thing that I've recognized in working with thousands of clients is that I don't do one-on-one -on -one coaching. And the reason I don't do one-on-one -on -one coaching is for two reasons. Number one, I, I friggin' hate it. Number two is that it's actually a disservice to any clients I would work with. Not because I'm a bad coach, but because of the nature of the relationship. Let me ask you this. Do you think that you would thrive by yourself in isolation with the occasional check-in with a coach? Or do you think you would thrive with more access to the coach and a team of coaches, not just coaches, but experts in, in different domains, and be surrounded by dozens or hundreds of other people just like you who are committed to big things in life? We become a reflection of our environment. So 
The benefit of a leveraged or a group coaching program is that you get to put your clients into a container, a community of people really, that is going to inspire them. It's going to help them get better results. There's a lot of research around this. I'm not just making this up. And we've also seen statistically in our business that not our clients, but our clients' clients get better results in a group online program than they were coming into the clinic or the gym one-on-one. -on -one. And it happens over and over and over again. Now, is, is that to say that there's no space for one-on-one? -on -one? Is that to say that there's no value for one-on-one? -on -one? There is for sure in certain cases, but please tell me which which cases those are. Maybe deep emotional trauma that needs some one-on-one, -on -one, you know, private stuff, sure. And maybe some HIPAA compliance stuff with like lab results, right? Which you can certainly set up within a group coaching program, no problem. Outside of that, there's really no argument you can make that's gonna convince me that one-on-one -on -one is more effective. It's not. I mean, I've been on the receiving end of both. I've been on the coaching end of both as well. And I can promise you this is when you have a coaching program set up properly, there's three things that happen. I call these the three C's, curriculum, community, and coaching. So in a group-based program, even if you're working one-on-one, -on -one, you have to, this goes back to your single target market. If you build a curriculum, the curriculum is the thing that's gonna provide you the most amount of freedom you've ever experienced. Because instead of you repeating yourself a million times, it's like, yeah, just watch the second video. It's in, just follow the process. It's in the portal, step-by-step. Step. There it is, there's a the recipe, just do it, cool. That's the foundation. You can't build a curriculum if you're helping 10 different types of conditions because now you have 10 different curriculums and you're gonna go crazy. So one single target market, one curriculum for those people, you become the industry leader in that single target market. They go through your curriculum, they're part of a community of like-minded people, all have the same issue. They're all motivating each other and inspiring each other and supporting each other. And then you layer that on top of coaching to whatever level you want to. That can be once a week, group call. I do three calls a week with my clients. Then we have our amazing team of coaches, copywriters, sales, mindset stuff, tech, up to seven calls a day. I'm not saying you have to do that, but that's the level of coaching and support that we can provide. And that's why I would never even dream of offering one-on-one. -on -one. I'm like, why would I work with you one-on-one -on -one when you would get way better support and coaching and results in this program? Because we have built it that way. And so like, if you want to build a, a coaching, like an online health coaching business, please build it for scale, even if you're working one-on-one, -on -one. which means you're taking a one-on-one -on -one clients to start with. Maybe you don't have a group yet, that's fine, right? But start to build out that curriculum, but you can't build a curriculum unless you've identified the single target market you're gonna serve, right? So those are the three big mistakes I see. I mean, there's obviously others, but I think those are the big three. And just to kind of like condense this to finish off is you have to identify a single target market. You have to charge premium prices and you should really definitely consider moving from one-on-one -on -one to more of a leveraged group program, not just for your own sanity and time, but for your clients' results. They will get better results in a community. And again, like there's all sorts of nuances in terms of how to keep people accountable and, you know, coach them and so forth. Listen, we've been doing this for years. We've figured this stuff out. If you want our help, click the link below, watch our webinar. If you want, book a call afterwards. Uh, we can certainly talk about that. But listen, nonetheless, I actually have another video I want to share with you right here somewhere on the other side of this video. I'm going to walk you through mathematically how to build a $1 million coaching business from scratch in 12 months. Want to see that? Cool. Click the video. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.